My name is Geeta Sen. I'm from India. I'm trained as an economist and I work on gender and development issues um, in the last 20 years or so, but particularly been working on health. On the International Panel for Social Progress, I'm one of the lead authors for Chapter 12, which is the chapter on global socioeconomic governance. And I expect that I'll be a contributing author to a number of other chapters, possibly the, if there is a chapter on health, uh, which some people think at this point there should be, um, possibly the gender chapter, uh, but we'll see how it goes. I think this is a project that's been long overdue. Um, and it's long overdue because, um, because while we have had in recent um, years um, various attempts to look at different aspects and elements of um, what one might think of as um, global problems, whether in the area of technology or in the area of the internet or um, certainly in on questions of climate change, as we know, um, we haven't really had one which tries to grapple with the question of um, human well-being um, directly um, in the with the scope that this project has. There have been reports that have looked at different elements of factors affecting human well-being, but um, this one has the largest scope of all of them. One mustn't forget that this project is taking place at the same time that the world's governments are coming to agreements around um, sustainable development goals, which are meant to deal with three aspects of human life. Um, and the economic aspect, the social aspect, and the environmental um, aspect. Um, the importance of it is that a project like this running sort of in parallel to that um, coming together of governments um, has the possibility of bringing together the best evidence that we have, the best knowledge that we have on key problems untrammeled by um, the typical intergovernmental concerns of, you know, um, governments trying to figure out what is or not politics, where their interests lie and so on. And here hopefully you have people from the social sciences, the humanities, a few natural scientists as well, I think, um, really looking at the evidence and saying that some of the key problems that we face in the area of human welfare, whether they are the problems of inequality, um, which some governments are not happy to focus on, um, whether it is the problem of women's human rights and the human rights of young people, um, whether it is the problem of violence and conflict, these are all issues that on which we now have a great deal of knowledge and evidence and that needs to be brought together in as clear and cogent a way as possible and I think that that's the, um, that for me that's the promise of this project. Some things that I, that my own work will contribute to this project, I hope, um, have to do with work in the area of global governance, particularly around health. Um, how do we get to the um, healthy lives for all, which is what the world's governments now are promising in, through the Sustainable Development Goals? Um, what do we know about the directions that global health governance is taking? Are they healthy directions or not? So that's one aspect um, of what I hope to bring. The other one, as I said, is that in all my work, all of my work is animated by deep conviction.
concerns about gender inequalities, cross-cut by other forms of social and economic inequality, such as caste or ethnicity or disability or race. None of these exist on their own. Um, and um, these are um, the people who are hurt the most by the um, deepening of socioeconomic inequality. Um, these are the people for whom the promises of economic growth or of social policies um, are often not met or at risk of not being met. Um, and for me, um, addressing as best we can what, is it, what it is that we learned through a variety of experiences at national levels, at local level where I work as well. Um, um, what it is, for instance, that women's organizations and the mobilization of civil society can bring to the, um, to the transformations that need to happen. Um, for me, these are the things that I hope, they're very much part of the work I do, and I would hope that they have, there's a place for them in, this, uh, in the IPSP's work. If one is asking the question of whether there is sufficient um, recognition at the level of governments, um, at the level of um, scientists and researchers, and, or at the level of ordinary citizens and people, about the um, importance of inequality and the role that inequality plays in their lives, I think that um, we go through various cycles in awareness. Um, in, in my lifetime, I've seen those cycles um, at work. At this moment, I think after a period when the problem of inequality tended to be brushed under the carpet a great deal, we're now seeing a significant resurgence of concern and interest. Um, and so in terms of understanding um, how it is, for example, um, long-standing social inequalities, such as those of caste or of ethnicity or of gender, um, interact with and exacerbate economic inequalities. Um, that kind of question is one that many more people are very interested to understand, to know, to work on, and hopefully to change. I don't think anybody knows whether, whether in the next 20 years um, we are going to see the world really come to terms with and um, grapple with some of the hardest questions that we have. Um, hard not because the science of them is hard so much as hard because the politics of them is very hard. Um, I don't think anyone can tell whether we're going to um, see a situation where the powerful in the world see that it is in their interest as much as in the interest of those with much less power than they have to resolve these problems um, in a socially benign way or whether we're going to see more of what we seem to be seeing in certain areas right now. Climate change is the very obvious one. If you ask me am I optimistic about climate change, I'm appallingly pessimistic about it. Um, but I try not to think about where that pessimism leads me because of what I know about climate change. And I think that when we have a situation that uh, where the melting of the Arctic ice is seen by a number of powerful players as whoopee, we now can get at the oil and the minerals under the ice, I think we're in serious trouble. So I, I'm not giving you, um, I, I don't have a straight answer to the question of whether to be pessimistic or optimistic about um, where, um, where we may be in 20 years time. I think that's just the nature of the beast. 
the only thing I can say is that, you know, somehow the human race has muddled along so far. And maybe we've reached the point where muddling won't be enough. Um, I hope good sense will prevail. <laughs>